Good evening. Hello. Welcome to Make It So. Reading through all your comments. Yes, we are glad to be back. We missed you too. Hey, Debbie, how are you doing tonight? Let me put my phone on Do Not Disturb because this is the time for all the telemarketers. Hey, Mindy, Amber, good evening. Hi, Beverly, how are you tonight? Hi, Cindy, Jody. Welcome. How about a tech check? How's our sound on Facebook and YouTube? Can everybody hear me? Say hello if you can. Give us a thumbs up. I need that. Hi, Drema. How are you? We're demoing a new foot tonight. New feet. That's like getting new shoes. Sort of. I mean, yeah. I could see how you get there. Yeah. <laughs> we missed you. Sounds great on YouTube. Sherry Lynch, how are you tonight? Miranda, how are you? I think first off, Joan, we would like to thank two of the customers that came down who are very dedicated people um, who came to help us in Branson um, in the Viking classroom. And we'd like to give a shout out to Miranda West and Amber Coffee. We really appreciated them chipping in. Thank you so um, much. FOF convention was going on, and so they came down to help because educators couldn't get to the classroom. So uh, a shout, a great shout out to you guys. Hope you enjoyed the Did the a show. great job. Um, Polly, how are you tonight? Cheryl, how are you? Hi, Carrie. Stephanie, welcome. Welcome. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to all the educators from the manufacturers. They did a fantastic job. Amazing. Aero, Aero Sewing, um, Kangaroo, and Americana. They had a great rep um, helping us out at the show. Um, the Viking educators were fantastic. And Absolutely. Deb fantastic. North and Alex, uh, shout out to you guys for all the work that you did. The Genomi educators were phenomenal. Um, Mitzi and Christina and Sam, we thank you very, very much for all your hard work. Um, so we'd like to thank uh, Joe and his team from Juki. And Nicole Anna, Moore. Nicole Moore and Kelly and Joe. So thank everyone who help to make the show a success and uh, provide some fun along the way. Yeah. So, and to the customers. I mean, there are a lot of people mm -hmm. wandering around. We talked to a lot of people. We met some of you that we have not seen before. Hi, Nikki. How are you tonight? Hi, Carla. Um, we met uh, Kitty Coons. So a big yeah. shout out to Kitty for the cool. face and the name is always kind of fun. So, well, Joan, who are we? We are Quilters HQ, Windmill Sewing Center, and Sewing Machines Express. The websites are quiltershq.com, windmillsewingcenter.com, and QHQ, the number two, .com. Um, We do have some shopping tonight for some kits. Um, announcements. Ad Astra Quilt Shop starts tomorrow. That is a Kansas shop hop. I think it includes the greater metro of Kansas City. I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, it goes down to Paola, yeah. mm -hmm. Eudora, Lawrence. I mean, there's some great shops along the way. Hopefully, you get to check out a lot of them. Uh, 11 shops in this one. So. And so, um, the quilt behind me is our quilt shop. Hi, Louise. How are you tonight? Um, quilt. So, we do have kits for that. I'll show you the kit tonight. If you can't make it to the show or to the um, shop hop, you can still um, get a kit for the quilt. And then we have another show and tell. But let's start with announcements. Um, new Table Runner Club starting April 14th. Is this current? I think it is. 10.30 to noon at Quilters HQ. Is that gonna, no, that's still going to start here. Mm -hmm. So we have move dates too. I'll tell you about that too. Uh, Diamond Skill Builder. We're going to have to reschedule this one. Kimberbell Club in April at Windmill Sewing Center is Saturday, April 9th. $25 for the class, $250 for the year. And that's all we have going on right now. Hi, Vicki. Welcome to the show. Hi, Peggy. How are you tonight? Um, coming up, April 9th and 10th is the Caw Valley Quilters Guild Show. 
It is a Crown Toyota of Lawrence, I'm guessing, because it says it right under the... <laughs> uh, 3430 Iowa Street in Lawrence, Kansas. They should have some really pretty quilts there. They should, yeah. It's a good time of year for that. Okay. So, show and tell. We have a, we have a quilt that was put together by uh, Vicki here at the store, and it is stunning we do have kits for this the kit is 109 you gotta show them the quilt the, the quilt i'm working nope. my way 101.99 and that includes the pattern isn't that gorgeous give us a thumbs up and so she did a blanket stitch with the mach sewing machine to Fuse all of the sunflowers. You would think that this would be our um, shop hop quilt, but it's not. So here is the kit. Comes with um, just an extra bag for all of the white. But this is a beautiful collection. These are Moda fabrics and um, Paintbrush Studio solid white. But an amazing, amazing quilt. So, Joan, if they're a... Uh out of state customer that won't make the shop hop or gonna have No, this is just a quilt we have just in store. Available for mm -hmm. everyone. Right? That's nice. So, so this it did come quilt, out beautiful. It's very spring. Here, let me open this up because that doesn't have the quilt dimensions. I know it's perfect in time for spring. So this quilt measures 64 by 72. And you have everything in here. I'm not sure about the binding. The binding is probably not included. Um, backing is not included. And of course, batting is not. But it's just a green fabric. This turned out just amazing. What do you mm -hmm. think? Yeah, it's beautiful. And let us know what you think. Throw a uh, flower emoji out there or something for yeah. us. <laughs> so the kids. Spring showers, I don't know, popping up in your garden, vegetables. And we have, I think, about six, one, two, three, four, four. It looks like four or five of these kits available. So if you want one, comment, make it mine. Reach for the sun quilt kit. Reaching for the sun. The cost for the kit is $101.99. does include the pattern. Um, I think it's at no cost if you buy the kit. Did you so, want to show a close-up on the other one? Sure, and I'll talk about the kit for that one, too. So, I don't think we've proofed it yet, so if you see threads hanging off of it, <laughs> just ignore those. Um, this is one I designed, and you have, too. You've sewn this block already. This is from one of our blocks for the block of the week. How cool is that? I know. They're right here. Let me see if I can snag these and find the right one. I think I can. And I'll show them to you as I'm flipping through to get to the right one. But I thought that it was a really pretty block. And sometimes blocks make really cool secondary patterns. And this one is no exception. You could put blue in this center square there and it would be really pretty too have we pieced it well i'm not seeing it maybe Seems i'm just like remembering know. piecing all of these <laughs> could be similar colors i don't know how you did that okay there we go yeah. so um the uh quilt measures 52 by 52 and it comes with all of the fabrics. The, the reds are going to be a little bit different. Um, and the creams are going to be a little bit different. It's a lot of yardage. And so we have to cut, cut a lot of kits. Um, it is $59.95 and includes the pattern. This is AccuQuilt friendly. So if you are making the sew along, you can use the um, block pattern that we use to make this quilt too. So, it turned out really beautiful. In the pattern, it's rotary cutting and a template for this little guy right here. Um, this is a um, different size block. So this is 12 inches in this quilt. The one we're making, the super sampler, is a 16-inch block. So it uses the 8-inch cube. This uses the 6-inch. So a little bit smaller. 
comment make it mine shop hop kit and we will get one to you so you get the first pick yeah love that sneak peek sneak peek and then later so let's give another shout out to um, Cheryl in our Springfield store so she was in the store <laughs> it's kind of a happy moment for me she was in the store and she was making these these are Kleenex box holders I searched all through the store we don't have one of the square Kleenex boxes to show you it in action but these are just adorable and I thought she was making these and I thought these would be perfect for candy at the quilt show in Branson so um, I put her to work and she made six of these so thank you Cheryl and I'm going to show you how to make this later so stay tuned and we're going to be using a compensating foot which is a lot of fun so let's get started with our block tonight's pattern is super super easy this is um you can call them two by fours <laughs> <laughs> It's not quite it looked a, like a Tetris block to me. But. It, it does kind of look like a Tetris block. Um, it's a really, really easy block to make. Super easy to cut out. We won't take up all of our time because the, the Kleenex box holder will take just a couple of minutes to make. Super easy. You're going to need a pen and paper to take notes on how to make this. But you'll be fine. Once you see it made, you may not even need notes. So we are using die number eight from the eight inch cube. It's two and a half by four and a half. That's where I got the two by fours. So we need um, 12 patches of the um, white. So let's layer and cut these. What was one of the things that you liked at the show the best? Um, I got some inspiration um, for some quilt designs. I look at other people's stuff and I go, I like that, but it's not quite me. So I like to take what somebody else did and make it unique to me, just uniquely mine. So there's my 12 of those. I liked meeting all of the people. There were a lot of people. There were a lot very, of people. Um, we're going to help some people start their businesses for quilting. So that's always fun. I love home-based businesses. We need 16 patches of this one. And I'm a little bit off on this, so I'm going to just straighten this salvage out a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, but... So we need 16 of the blue. Seeing everybody was great. Seeing the, I mean, the amazing work of the, the quilts is pretty awesome too. I mean, they, they really were pretty amazing, so. The quilts were incredible. Very incredible. I think a lot of people had fun in uh, some of the classes. We got to hang out with Eleanor Burns for just a little bit. What a phenomenal lady. Yeah, she's a riot. <clears throat> when I was, um, we were waiting for Sam to come into the classroom to do the demo on the machine, because she had never sewn on it before. And she was like, okay, everybody caress their machine. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's yeah, awesome. She was pretty funny. Yeah, she's pretty funny. And we got to take pictures with her, so. Yeah, we'll post those. Um, I don't know if I sent them to Molly or not, but we did actually have someone bring in their quilt from the last shop pop we did. They made it bigger, so. Oh, cool. I know. So there is all of those pieces, and we need four of this. So in your kit, you'll have a half of a width. The kit cost is five dollars and thirty-three this week. For this one. Yep. Five dollars thirty-three cents. Building's coming along nicely. 
Yeah, we're getting there. Birth dates. April 27th and 28th. Moving company is going to be here. So we're going to start some sales. So if you are not subscribed, go to quiltershq.com. Sign up for the newsletter because you don't want to miss because I don't want to pay to move it. I'd rather move it to your home than my new location. So, okay. So I have piecing instructions on here. And so you're going to make 12 of the blue and the white, and you're going to make four of the blue and the red units. So we only need one for our little quarter of our square of the blue and the red, and then we need three of the blue and the white. So I'm just going to fly through these. I've got to put my bobbin in too. I was winding a new bobbin. And of course I'm sewing with my favorite thread, which is Arafil color number 2615, which is this aluminum color. This appears, I use it everywhere. And it'll work much better than pink. I hope everybody's excited about seeing a new foot. This is one of my favorite um, feet. So when you're sewing on either the TL2010 or the TL18, you have access to the industrial feet, which you don't normally with your home sewing machine. And so the compensating foot is one that is just, it's a lot of fun. Okay, let's sew our red one first. Find my petal, set our stitch length, back stitch that because it was kind of a small. And they go fast. 1500 stitches per minute, I think. The 18? Yeah. Let's find out. You time it. Sure. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Six, seven, eight. You count. Nineteen, also. eleven. Twelve, thirty, forty. <laughs> okay, it went way too fast for me to count. Oh. Uh, Joan, uh, you know, we've got some of the classroom machines are left over. Um, some M7s and 9450s. So and for the you, Sapphire. Yeah, for you Springfield viewers, um, definitely might want to give a call to the store. Um, there's a great bundle for that, um, so call in, talk with uh, one of the sales reps. And even Kansas City there. viewers, too. Um, I mean, I can't, great, I can't deliver machines. it to you from this store, but it's worth a drive down there. Trust me on that one. Prices. So, Prices are good. Very good. And the machines, we already know they work. Great machines. So. Doesn't happen often, but every once in a while I get one out of the box and it just doesn't sell. These, we all we know all of them sell. Let me find my doohickey. Multi-function finger presser tool. <laughs> I think these are $7.99 or $7.95. So you don't really need to worry a whole lot about which direction you press your seams on this because they're not going to line up. So on the white one, I am going to press away from the white though, just because I don't want that showing through. Hi, Mary. You're not late. You can always rewatch. Yep. And I think I did make this once, and I had to pick it out and remake it because I did not lay it out beforehand, and it was the red ones that threw me off. So you're going to make four units exactly like this. And so then you just rotate them. So I'm only, only going to sew this one unit, so let's sew these two together, because I have them right there. Okay. 
press that towards that unpieced side. And then we'll take it over and do a really good press with the iron. You know, I had not been to Branson since I was a kid. We used to go down in the summertime and go to um, Silver Dollar City. And it was literally, it was a town where um, there was like one main road. And there was like maybe two diners. And I think they might have had a McDonald's. It's kind of iffy. But um, it's all grown up now. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff down there. Uh, they have Car a zip line. Carrie's from around there, and we went on an adventure for the uh, Walgreens and uh, Walmart to replenish water and candy. Yeah. And I was just amazed at all the stuff, how much it's grown up down there. It's just everywhere. Yeah. And then I had a, a lady come up, and I was talking to her about a long arm, and we were just chit-chatting, and then she goes, oh, I live in Salem. And I'm like, I know where that is. I grew up in Somersville. And she goes... Well, I grew up in Somersville. She's like, how old are you? <laughs> and I said, oh, you know. And she's like, what's your maiden name? And I told her. And she's like, oh, I used to ride the school bus with you every day. <laughs> it's a small, small world. And I believe her mom used to actually drive the school bus. A little bit right later. Okay, here is our corner piece. How cool is how quickly this block goes together? I'm going to press it the other way. And so you're going to make four of these units and piece them together. We're not making four tonight because we have other things to show you. But there it is. Nice. Yeah. I think I might actually have this one already finished. It's yep. the last one, right? It is the last one. Oh, there so you there's go. your finished block. So my mistakes are your advantage because Hi, Debbie. you won't have to pick this out because I struggled with this a little bit. And it's because it was probably late at night after dinner and I was a little bit tired, but... Still, I know this block is in there now, in those blocks. Okay, so let's clear a spot, and we're going to talk just for a second, and then we're going to sew. Yay! Yay! Sewing. That's what we love to do. So these will make great holiday gifts for your not-quilt-worthy people. <laughs> we know who they are. We won't name names, but... We all have them in our lives. And for me, it's people who said, please don't give me any more quilts. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I will. So um, we had some scraps laying around. This is a holiday fabric collection. And it was just not enough to make a fat quarter. So for your viewing pleasure, these are super easy to make. You need a, was it in there? I didn't see it. I might have it at home. Maybe. Um. You need some pins and two 15 inch squares and one of the squares needs to be stabilized and I am using this is Bozel's Durafuse fusible non-woven medium so it's kind of it's it's kind of it's a little bit stiff so you can see it's kind of it's got some body to it um, this sells for $5.41 a yard, and a yard, 15 inches, you can get, and it's half, hey, Julie. half the size, so you can get at least, what, two of them. Mm -hmm. So I've already fused, this is going to be the inside, this is going to be the outside. I've already fused this because, you know, watching somebody iron is just not the funnest thing on the planet. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to line these up, I'm going to put a couple of pins in. 
Remember our discussion about do you sew over the pins? Do you not sew over the pins? Oh, yeah. So there was a poll, I think we did. There was a poll that we did. I'm just going to pin so that I don't have to even worry about the pins. You do need to leave an opening so that you can turn this. I am putting pretty sides together, right sides together, and then we're going to turn this. And then we're going to use the compensating foot. It's a really fun foot. New shoes. New shoes. Aren't they always fun? I use it when I'm binding. Oh, that's too big. Let's get the skinny one. And I'm just stabilizing this in place so that it doesn't shift on me when I'm sewing. Molly has her fun shoes on tonight. Oh, yeah. Those are cool. I was admiring those. Vans, right? <laughs> yep. Yep. Vans were popular when I was in younger high school. Yeah, they were, weren't they? They were. Rule of thumb, if you wore it the first time, you don't get to wear it the second time. <laughs> <laughs> Bell bottoms. Wide leg jeans. So if I were to wear bell bottoms, the hourglass would pants. be in the wrong place. If you know what I mean. Parachute pants. Parachute pants. I don't think <laughs> those will ever come back. back. <laughs> what? Those should not come back. <laughs> those should not come back. Okay, so I'm going to start sewing probably about three inches from the edge here. And I'm going to leave an opening about yay big. I'm going to reinforce my starting seam simply because I don't, when I turn it, I don't want it to tear. So using a quarter inch seam and I'm just guessing so when I get to good guess about a quarter inch seam these don't have to be perfect this is just fly along I'm gonna loosen my presser foot pressure getting a little bit of uh, pucker puckering here Cord. I am excited about the new studio. Yeah. It's going to be nice. Yeah. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for sharing. We do appreciate that greatly. Carol, how are you tonight? If I had to do it over again, I think I would put the fusible side on top and let the fat, the feed dogs sew the... Uh, no, we're not at the new store yet, Julie. Um, the move's going to be at the end of April. 27th and 28th. just like to make an entrance so every email that we send out is going to have those dates on because we will be closed we're hoping to be reopened by the following monday okay anytime you're working with squares on the corners you want to just notch these corners off you do not want to cut into your stitching and i'm just kind of rounding it a little bit And that's going to give you nice sharp points. And I'm going to reach into my, well, I got to find it, my reinforced seam here. And turn all of this stuff right side out. Also not fun to watch, but. Do you want the Floriana turning tool? Do you have one? No. 
Sure, I think there's one in there. Yeah. Good use for it. If you can find it. I don't know the cost off the top of my head for them. Hmm. I with my pins. And then I'm just going to straighten it out while he's looking for that turning tool. I might not wait. I'll just use my doohickey. <laughs> to reach in here and straighten this out. And then we're gonna walk over to the iron, which I have already hot, waiting just for this. And I'm just poking that seam out. It's a great product for that. It is a great product for that. I improvised. Mm -hmm. That would be better, because it is longer. Yeah. This is the Iron K. Yep. Precision turning tool. They're $15.99. The coolest thing Great. about that is it looks like it's round, but it's actually like a pencil. So when you put it down, it's not going to roll away. And it's longer than my doohickey. Okay. So we've got all of our seams kind of sharp here. Looks like a little pillow. We're going to press this and then I'm going to tuck this opening. I'm going to pull these seams in and make sure that they line up with my sewn seam and press those down too. So let's go to the lower star. Don't need that corner. And you want to press both sides on this, too. Is everybody with me so far? Give me a thumbs up if you are. Throw an emoji out there if you're following along. And then I'm just going to make sure that this seam is... The, the side that was stabilized is laying nice and flat and smooth. And so I just want to make sure this side looks well as... Looks good as well. Quick little shot of steam, makes everything lay flat. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do, let me iron this side too. Oh, Cheryl said she was glad to see you making the box. Yeah, I told her I was gonna do it. Did she, was she on when I was saying, giving her a shout out for saying thank you? Cheryl, did you get the shout out, thank you? Turned inside out, turned right side out. So you've got your two pieces. One side is fused, one side is not, and my foot. So I don't know if you can get in close enough. Mm -hmm. So a compensating foot is has this little spring on one side. It's actually um, lower on one side than it is the other. So our needle is going to go here, and this is going to give me a perfect I believe this is the seven millimeter, which is a, nope, this is a quarter inch. So this is going to be a quarter inch top stitch. We're still going to do it in this decorative thread that I have already preloaded. So let's just trade out our foot. We don't need this magnet. I'm just going to stick it right there. Oh, how handy. I know, right? <laughs> so this foot and the seven millimeter come with the TL-18. So why would you want a seven millimeter? Scant quarters. Seven millimeters is a scant quarter. So if you have a pattern that calls for a scant quarter, you could just put that foot on and have your scant quarter already there. And so I'm gonna pull my bobbin out because I want a longer tail because I'm gonna use these for top stitching. So when you're doing that, you want to pull your threads to the top just like you were quilting so that we can trim them nice and tidy. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Do they, do they make a compensating foot for the genome? They do not. 
So the compensating foot is an industrial foot. So um, you need an industrial or a semi-industrial machine. I think Brother might make one, but it actually might be for their industrial machine. I know I've seen one. Um, so what would you recommend to customers who have other, I mean, to get similar results? Similar results, you can use your quarter inch foot with a guide. Um, the compensating foot is just a little bit sturdier. Um, so like when you have that little blade, sometimes when you're sewing something this thick and already stabilized, it can cause that little guide to bend a little bit. So I'm going to do a needle up, needle down. Needle down, needle up, actually. Hi, Carol. How are you tonight? Welcome to the show. And then I'm going to grab a hold of that bobbin thread. And I'm just going to pull these off to the side. I'm going to try and line up pretty close. And if you'll notice, I'm actually sewing. I don't know if you can see right here. I'm actually sewing the side that has the opening first. Because I want to stabilize that before we do anything else. And I said... I was going to, then I didn't. So I think it's easier to sew the side that has the stabilizer in it. So let me do this again. Needle down, needle up, maybe I can say it right this time. So the stabilizer was causing my thread to, or my fabric to slide a little bit. So I'm just flipping it over. And I'm gonna sew through the, this side first. And I'm going to make my stitches probably, we'll say two and a half inches. And then I'm just going to guess when I'm close to that and then pivot. So, Vicki, Joan was saying that on the genomes, you could just use probably your quarter-inch foot, your standard yep. quarter-inch foot. Could be easiest. Mm -hmm. Well, Cheryl's on here. Cheryl, what, what machine? I think she has a baby there, I think. I think so. Yeah. So, brother. And baby lock. Okay. Last so well almost. Have this in a partial. threads aside from where I started. Maybe one more stitch. So Cheryl said, yeah, she has a baby lock. She just used her quarter inch foot. And again, I want to trim these, so I'm just going to pull this out and use my scissors. Because when we're doing top stitching, we want it to be tidy. Move that one out of the way. And this is my first time making this. So that's how easy these are. Cheryl was telling me it was pretty easy. And when she explained it to me, I was like, yep, that's pretty easy. You know what they make great? Did you tell them what they make great holders for? Candy. So yep. She, yeah, we put candy in them, which... Yep. Beautiful little candy dish. So you're going to fold corner to corner, just like this, like you were folding a napkin. And you're going to measure in three and a half inches. Actually, I think I'm doing this right. Nope, I'm not. I think it's three and a half here. So let's get a lead pencil. Because I know it'll wash out. Or is it here? Let's. She also said fold in half. Fold in half. Okay, so I did watch that video. <laughs> Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, Cheryl.
and you're going to mark center. All right, Cheryl, stop me if I'm going wrong here. And then we're going to measure said, yep. corner to corner. Okay. And you measure three and a half inches, right? Three and a half inches. And you're going to sew along this. She said pin the top opening. Oh, I'm going to tack it. Okay. Okay. So I don't have a tacking machine. So pin the top opening. I did watch that. And so we're just going to put it under here. I'm going to trade my foot back out because we're done with it. Fold in half, pin the top. Fold in half, pin the top. And right where that pin is, but it's actually the opposite, right? So if I want this to be my outside, I need to go this way. Then measure three and a half up and over. So here, here. Cheryl's got this down pat. <laughs> here. And then you actually put a tack, a tacking stitch on these, like three stitches. But just you want to hold it. Just to hold it. I am going to take my pin out. And I'm going to make my stitches really small. Okay, another one right there, so pin the opening on top, the two layers, okay, and, and then you turn it, it does work. Right side out. Is everybody with me so far? And so when we fold this, I think it's the same way on the other side, right? Is we're making a square because you've got to match these up. Nope, I turned too soon. Turn too soon. Turn too soon. It's like origami. It's like fabric <laughs> origami. Mm -hmm. And so then you fold this way. Origami, I think. Now I'm lost. She said she didn't make it like that. <laughs> didn't make it like this with the tacking stitches? I think she said um, pin the top, I think. Pin the top opening. The top opening? Yep. And then um, she pins the two layers together. And then measure three and a half up and over. Pin the opening on the top, the two layers. Let's pin here. And then mm -hmm. measure three, three and a half, half up. Yep. And three and a half over. Yep. Yep. With my tacking stitches, I don't really need to measure. But she said it was pin. folded in half. 
Mm. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> so fold it in half. So let me take out my tacking stitches. We do have a giveaway tonight too. And also the uh, thread of the month. Will you talk about the thread of the month? So the thread of the month is... Aerofill color. Color is forty six forty eight. So variegated, very pretty. And if you're part of the thread of the month club, make sure you get that. And the giveaway is. So it has to be pieced like this. One of the kits, right? Or the, hmm. um, nope. Oh, the box. Right? The box. Yeah. So hopefully I do a good job here. <laughs> Three and a half inches. And so we sew. Well, actually, let's do it right sides out. I saw a video, and we'll just do it this way. Because I think. This is three and a half inches. It is exactly. So I am just going to mark it real quick. And so on your ruler, three and a half. It's live folks. Anything can happen, right? And we're going to sew here and here. Good mark. And 45, three and a half. Do you want to the strip cutter? Okay. Wrong way. This will fold over like that. <laughs> yeah, it's nice out there, isn't it, Debbie? Three and a half, just making it sharp, right? And there. I think that's right. It's live, folks. Anything can happen. We're going for it. I kind of think it's not. <laughs> uh, best day of the of the next week. Oh yeah, no, it doesn't seem like it's gonna. Um, Three and a half. So we're actually sewing these in here. Took me a second, but I think I'm on the right page now. If I can find the right angle on my ruler. We got a few minutes left. Okay. So there's three and a half right there. Three and a half right there. I'm actually going to draw this right there. And same thing here. Three and a half. She said, That's right. That's right. A little Cheryl, bit slow. Cheryl said you're on track now. I am cooking with gas, folks. Okay. And so let's make my stitches about two inches. Spread. 
spin it around, sew this other seam. And then we fold it in half and do the same thing again, right? So you measure. Easier if I had a smaller ruler. Um, which it's okay. one you, you got enough? Yep. Marking tool. Oh, it's supposed to snow. Bummer. What? Yeah. It was Cheryl weird. said that's right, by the way. One, two. It helps if I mark it in the right place, though. Three and a half. <laughs> right there. And I'm going to draw my middle line. Here. And then I'm going to sew this. I'm going to come back and measure the other one. And by uh, magic, when Molly puts this video together, it's going to look perfect. Okay, so we got three <laughs> sides. Everybody's saying, keep that snow in Michigan. We don't want any. <laughs> no, no snow here. No snow allowed. I am done with the snow. I tell you. Well, that's a nice weather. Yeah. Just for change. Days at the lake, fishing. Not me. I usually fishing? do, no, yeah, not me. I usually do um, paper hexes when Robert's fishing. Yeah. <laughs> Vicki said she's done over that snow, too. I think everybody is over the snow. Okay. And then... All you need to do, flatten your base out, and then these sides get folded over. And I don't have a free arm on this machine, but you're just gonna tack them down. Or you can put a button or something decorative, or you could take them to your serger, just surge them off, and you have- We your... do, sometimes, yeah. My next box holder. So I just don't have a free arm to do this on this one. I might be able to get that under the needle. Let's see if I can finagle it from the inside. This is truly where the strength of that um, TL2010 comes in handy. Yeah, it's an 18, but... Or TL18. Nope, no way to do it. Need a free arm. So, right there, we'll just pin it for the show and come back on another machine and finish it. Fold in half, not corner wise. I don't know why I was going corner to corner. Confused. And I can tell you, they make great candy dishes. They do make great candy dishes. They yeah, so like... you could put a button or whatever mm -hmm. you wanted on there. You could fold the corners down, right? And put yeah. You could into... fold these down and under there. Like a button. Or... I kind of like them standing up. It's kind of cool standing up because they look like yeah. a flower budding or something. Looks like a tulip. A tulip. There you go. And it's spring. All it's right. You got, a, you got a very cute from Cheryl, so you finished it. <laughs> Woo! Wetting. Um, yeah, so not difficult at all. Fold in half, not corner wise. And you uh, lost a few people after the first fold, so maybe we'll have to make another one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But. Or Molly will magically 
make it uh, make it blossom. Perfect. <laughs> make it make sense. That's right. Okay. Well, I hope to see you tomorrow at the shop hop. It'll be giveaway? a lot of fun. Giveaway. We'll give away the one Cheryl made. Yeah, because it looks so nice. It does look nice, and it is finished. So, an Xbox holder or candy dish. We actually did not have this one out at the show, so it traveled yeah. to Branson, but did not have candy in it. Yeah. So we just need a winner. This would be better. It's a little bit longer. So for harder to reach little spots. Lori and Augustine. Lori Anderson. Augustine. Anderson or Augustine? Mm -hmm. Uh did I read that right? Molly, am I getting it wrong? Lori and Augustine Anderson. Augustine Anderson. Lori and Augustine. Congratulations. Make sure you give us your information or go out and register so that um, Carrie can get this sh shipped out to you. Yep. Go to quiltershq.com <laughs> today. And register for Make It So. That gives us your information. We will ship this out to you. And again, if you if you wanted any of the kits um, and you have not shopped with us before and you claimed one, you do need to go to make it to um, quiltershq.com and register for Make It So that we can send you an invoice in your email. Okay. I think that's us for tonight. Well, we're glad to be back. Yes. We're a little tired. I am a little tired. <laughs> It's a lot of machines to move. And it's a lot of work every day. And we so. can't leave out um, Sean and Spencer. Yes. Who for helped us helping carry all a of lot these of stuff. machines. It's like 70 something machines, sewing machines. And, and, a, and a personal shout out to our Janome rep, um, he who won't be named, but um, and our, uh, he did a uh, lot, a lot of work. Um, so behind the scenes, a lot of things happen yeah. at those shows. And, you know, they do a lot of work. So we and appreciate him as well. And Both. our Viking rep as well. And so. uh, Joe. And Joe. Because they gave us all really great pricing on the machines. and So that we can of, offer them to you at the yep, show. At great prices. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Enjoy your week. And remember to change your needle. Check your thread path. There was something else we were going to add, too. What did we add here? Um, oil your hook. Yep. Add a drop of oil. Yep. To make your life sing.